as a species, we're curious. If we see a big red button that says, don't touch, we want to touch it. And if we see an extraordinary animal, our natural instinct is to reach out and pat it. Um. But you know what? Don't, and you're about to learn why. From poison dart frogs to fire coral, here are 20 animals you should never, ever touch. Number 20. Camels Camels are docile and even friendly animals used as a mode of transport in desert environments. So you can definitely touch and pat them while they're alive, but when they're dead, it's a different story. This is why touching a dead camel is so dangerous. They become almost like ticking time bombs. Just look at that bloated stomach. Camels sometimes die in accidents or of disease, and their corpses quickly start to break down in the hot, arid environment. Even if you're absolutely starving, I wouldn't recommend trying to get meat or water from them. Bacteria begins to grow inside the carcass, which could make someone very sick if they eat the contaminated meat. Then there's the fact that the corpse is pretty much a biochemical weapon and can explode at any moment. The fat inside the camel's humps can be converted into carbon dioxide, methane, and organic acids that produce gas like hydrogen sulfide and ammonia. As the temperatures in desert environments are pretty high, the decay rate is accelerated and the gas builds up quicker. The camel's carcass can inflate like a balloon and, without warning, explode. The last thing you want is to be covered in pieces of rotting camel meat. Yikes. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Dolphins. Dolphins are downright adorable, and you'd be forgiven for just wanting to snuggle them senseless. Although, we'd recommend not doing that. As cute, cuddly, and comical as these ocean critters are, they are a bit dangerous. First of all, they can bite and do. Dolphins actually have up to 100 teeth that they can use to secure their prey, grip it, and then pull it apart. The National Maritime Fisheries Service has even released marketing materials to warn people that they can bite, and an eight-year-old girl was even bitten by one at SeaWorld in 2012. Oh, and did I mention they can also attack? Alongside biting, they can launch a full-on painful attack that can cause some pretty severe injuries. Valerie Ryan from County Clare in Ireland was swimming in the water by a dolphin when it became territorial of the people it usually played with and attacked her. She sustained several serious injuries, including six spinal fractures, broken ribs, a damaged lung, and post-traumatic stress. Knowing they can hunt in groups of up to a thousand members and often remain in pods of over a dozen, you can end up in quite a dangerous situation. Number 18. Slow Loris. I feel like slow lorises were put on Earth to test our impulse control. We've got an animal this ridiculously cute and we can't even cuddle it? That should be illegal. Slow lorises are fuzzy little wide-eyed nocturnal primates from the forests of South and Southeast Asia. They have doe-like eyes, cute little snouts, and tiny little fingers that they use to grip onto branches. They actually look completely harmless, but they are far from it. If you were to get bitten by one, you might notice that your flesh starts to rot. Slow lorises are one of the only venomous mammals in the world and can use their venom on us and their own kind. Scientists didn't immediately know what made this animal so terrible to touch, but they were able to observe some strange things. They noticed how slow lorises would raise their arms above their heads and lick the glands in their upper arms. These glands contain venomous oil. The venom then mixes with their saliva in the grooves of their canine teeth, which are sharp enough to cut through flesh, muscle, and bone with no issues. According to one doctor, the bite is horrendous enough to cause necrosis. Other slow lorises have been documented with their eye, part of their scalp, or even half their face missing. Number 17. Passowaries. 
Cassowaries are large, flightless birds, like emus, that come from the tropical forest environments of Australia and Southeast Asia. They can grow up to 6 feet 6 inches tall and weigh a hefty 132 pounds. So, yeah, they're no lorikeet or pigeon. They're also quite beautiful birds, since they have bright blue faces, red wattles hanging from their necks, and a unique cask or helmet on their heads. But don't let their beauty fool you. These birds are killers, and I'm not even exaggerating. Cassowaries have incredibly muscular legs with three claw-tipped toes that they can use as weapons. Each claw can grow up to five inches long, and they can strike out with absolute precision, producing wounds that look like they're made with daggers. If they attack you in the right place, you can end up in the hospital or, worse, dead. A 16-year-old boy was hit in the neck by one when he tried to flee and fell to the ground in 1926. More recently, in 2019, a 75-year-old man was attacked by one that lived on his property in Florida, and he died in the hospital from his injuries. You might assume that birds can't hurt you, but cassowaries are easily one of the most dangerous birds in the world, and you certainly need to give them their space. Number 16. Elephants Elephants are graceful, intelligent, and beautiful animals that have appeared in many films we love, like Dumbo. Seeing how they're represented in children's movies can make you think they're gentle giants. And for the most part, they are, but they're also incredibly dangerous, which means you won't want to touch one without being told that you can. According to many sources, upwards of 100 to over 500 people are killed by elephants each year. Sometimes humans are just in the wrong place at the wrong time and get stomped on, but they can also attack when they're enraged or feeling threatened. Um. Elephants also raid villages and croplands while destroying homes in the process. Over 200 people in Kenya have died from elephant attacks in the last seven years, and over 100 people in India die each year. Unfortunately, these deaths have a lot to do with the situation that we've put on ourselves. As we build outward, the elephant's territory becomes much smaller. To eat, they have to come to villages and devour farmers' plant crops and even villagers' homes. They can decimate a hectare of crops in no time at all while uprooting trees wherever they see them. Elephants are dangerous and destructive, so they're not animals you should approach in their natural environment. Number 15. Blue Ringed Octopuses Blue Ringed Octopuses, or octopi, call them what you will, are cute little two and a half inch critters with four inch long arms and bright blue rings all over their bodies. They live in the Pacific Ocean between Japan and Australia, and you might also spot them around the western Indo-Pacific Islands. They look innocent and rarely bite humans, but you may need to read your last rites if they do. They are venomous, and each tiny little octopus has enough venom to kill over 20 men in just a few minutes. Fortunately, few deaths have been recorded, but a 2008 study noted that there had been at least three. Blue ringed octopuses have tetrodotoxin, or TTX venom, which is by far one of the most deadly types. They produce it in their salivary glands and disperse it through their beaks. Once bitten by this octopus, you may experience saliva production, tingling, numbness, difficulty swallowing, and chest tightness. Sweating, dizziness, headaches, nausea, and vision loss may follow. The severity of these symptoms, and how many of them you experience, can depend on how much venom was in the bite. Unfortunately, symptoms can escalate into paralysis, muscle weakness, and a lack of oxygen and coordination. Some people experience respiratory depression or arrest, and if medical professionals are fast enough to act, they can potentially save your life with supplemental oxygen, IV fluids, and intubation if you're not able to breathe on your own. Number 14. Poison Dart Frog Why does nature have to be so cruel? We've got beautifully vibrant frogs and we can't even touch them. Life's not fair. Poison dart frogs are bright colored frogs from Central and South America tropical rainforests. There are over a hundred different species and they can be all manner of fun colors like green, blue, red, orange, black, and even gold. They're the type of animal most kids would love to have as pets, but there's a catch. They are incredibly poisonous if they aren't bred in captivity. Their coloring is to ward off would-be predators to tell them they don't make great snacks, and they really don't. 
While most poison dart frogs aren't dangerous to us, there's one that's so dangerous we couldn't even touch it without getting sick. And that's the golden poison dart frog. Even though it's only two inches long, it contains enough poison to take down 10 grown men. Surprisingly, poison dart frogs in zoos or bred in captivity aren't poisonous, which leads scientists to believe that their toxicity comes from their diet in the wild. They feed on termites, ants, beetles, and centipedes. And as this unique diet isn't replicated in captivity, they don't become toxic. Number 13. Giant Ant Eater Giant anteaters don't even look deadly. Sure, ants are probably absolutely terrified of them, but should we be? Well, as it turns out, yes. Giant anteaters are a vulnerable species living in savanna-like fields of Central and South America. They can grow up to about seven feet long and have four sharp claws on each of their forelimbs to feast on termite mounds and anthills. Although, they can also use those claws to attack humans. They may have no teeth, impaired hearing, and terrible vision, but they aren't incapable of violence. They are typically not aggressive towards people, but there have been reports of them killing two hunters in two separate incidents in Brazil. Eater encounters more common. As they have such poor eyesight and hearing, they can be easily frightened and want to protect themselves at all costs. So they do this with their giant pocket knife-like claws that can inflict severe damage. In the first attack, an anteater stood on its hind legs and grabbed a man with its forelimbs, resulting in deep puncture wounds to his upper arms and thighs. He bled to death at the scene. Another man died when an anteater used its long front claws to puncture his femoral arteries in his groin and thigh. Number 12. Leopard Seals Leopard seals are among Antarctica's largest predators, only losing out on the top spot to the killer whale. They can weigh up to 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds and reach lengths of up to 12 and a half feet. So yeah, they are by no means small. Leopard seals are circumpolar and live around sub-Antarctic islands and northern waters, feasting on penguins, fish, squid, and similar. If you're going to find them anywhere, it'll most likely be near open pack ice and near penguin colonies near breeding season. It's hard to see them as anything other than the puppies of the sea, as they are genuinely quite cute, but you'd want to be cautious when around them. They are heavier than most bears and are ferocious ambush predators that can sneak up on you at a moment's notice. Fortunately, attacks on humans are rare, especially when humans are seen in advance. They'll even interact with divers with great curiosity, although that's not to say they aren't capable of attacks. In 2003, 28-year-old marine biologist Kirsty Brown was killed at the British Antarctic Survey Rothera base as she was snorkeling about 65 feet from the shore. A leopard seal attacked her, and she drowned. It had taken her about 230 feet down into the water, and all attempts to save her life were unsuccessful. Successful. Number 11. Puffer Fish Looking at a puffer fish, it doesn't look too much different from other fish, as in you'd never guess that they contain enough toxins to kill 30 adults and that if you're poisoned, you may die since there's no known antidote. But that's pretty much the truth. Puffer fish are one of the most poisonous vertebrates in the world and contain tetrodotoxin, which is up to 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide. Knowing this, you'd think we would avoid them at all costs and leave them in the ocean to do their thing, but we don't. Now, instead, in some parts of the world, like Japan, we serve them up as a delicacy known as fugu. Trained, licensed chefs can carefully prepare them to ensure customers only get the safe parts of the fish. But mistakes happen. That much is obvious when you learn that over a hundred people die from puffer fish poisoning every year, mostly in Japan and China. Fugu is served in restaurants as sashimi and chirinabe, but the liver also used to be prepared in a dish called fugu kimo. It was long considered the tastiest part of the fish, but was also the most poisonous. Eventually, serving puffer fish liver was outlawed in 1984. Honestly, can't we just stick to salmon? Number 10. Cone Snails when you go out for a dive in the ocean and come across a beautiful looking shell, it can be tempting to pick it up. 
After all, shells aren't harmful, right? Wrong. The shell you're picking up could belong to the cone snail, and your split-second decision to grab it may have just resulted in your death. Cone snails are predatory and eat marine worms, fish, and even other snails if they haven't had much luck with other food. When they sense food, they use their needle-like protrusion connected to their mouths to launch an attack. From this sharp proboscis, they can release venom with an analgesic effect. Their sharp proboscis can penetrate through diving gloves and other hard materials because they're designed to break through the thick skin of fish. Even if you don't pick up a shell, you might still be at risk. Accidentally standing on one can also lead to poisoning. According to a 2004 report, about 30 human deaths related to cone snails have been reported. That might not seem like a lot, but many of them may have been avoided if people knew what they were dealing with and just left them alone. Number 9. Squirrels Squirrels are cute little rodents with big eyes, bushy tails, and slim bodies. They have soft and silky fur and can be a range of colors like black, red, brown, white, yellow, and gray. For many homeowners, having squirrels visit is a delight, and they might even encourage them to come back with the promise of seeds and nuts in the backyard. However, as innocent and cute as squirrels seem, they're probably animals you shouldn't interact with or touch. They aren't generally harmful, but they can carry rabies, and this disease can cause them to attack people. Then there's the impact they can have on your home. When they want to find somewhere warm to shelter, they can choose your home and cause a lot of damage. They can leave urine and feces everywhere, chew through plumbing, and even chew electrical wires that cause fires and power outages. Squirrels can also carry mites, ticks, fleas, and a wide range of parasites that they can bring into your home. Sure, they're nice to view from a distance, but I would not recommend and encouraging them to visit. Quite the opposite, in fact. Number 8. Swans Swans are beautiful, graceful, and elegant-looking birds. It's easy to assume that these features also reflect their personalities, but that's not entirely true. In reality, they are stone-cold killers. Well, at least one of them is. Anthony Hensley used to work for a company that provided swans to keep geese away from properties. He needed to tend to the birds outside a residential complex near Chicago in 2012, so he got into his kayak and made his way across the pond. Unfortunately, one of the swans charged at his kayak and capsized it. It then proceeded to stop him from getting to shore, and he died. According to ornithologists, mute swans can be aggressive when defending their nests. If they believe someone is a threat to them, their nest, or their babies, they are not afraid to resort to violence. In this situation, the consequences were severe. There have also been several other instances of swan violence, including a swan in England on the River Cam repeatedly attacking rowers. His name was Mr. Asbo, and he was named after the anti-social behavior orders that the UK courts issued. If you happen to be somewhere where swans live, just give them their space. You can identify their nesting areas by flattened reeds along a bank or shore, so stay away from such places. Number 7. Sea Urchins Many animals look innocent, which is what makes you touch them when you possibly shouldn't. But sea urchins are different. They are covered in spikes. So while you might be curious, you're probably dubious about getting too close to them anyway. There are about 950 different sea urchin species, and they use their spines as a defense mechanism. If you happen to touch one and one of their spines penetrates your skin, you may end up in quite a lot of pain, and even more pain when you try to remove the spines. Even after a short amount of time of them being in your skin, they can cause quite a lot of damage to your skin, tissue, and bone. The good news is, you most likely won't be dying from the sting of a sea urchin, but some people can develop serious complications, especially if they have an allergic reaction. Some species are also more dangerous than others, so you just never know what the outcome is going to be. Some of the most common symptoms of a sea urchin sting include muscle aches, shock, weakness, paralysis, and fatigue. Immediately removing the spine can be your most effective treatment method, followed up with vinegar to dissolve any superficial spines, a hot soak in water to relieve pain, anti-inflammatory drugs, and a tetanus injection. However, you should seek immediate medical treatment if you have trouble breathing, mood changes, a change in heart rate, loss of consciousness, extensive swelling, nausea, or giddiness. Number 6. Fire Coral 
Fire coral is so interesting, it's hard not to dive down into the water for a closer look. You might even be tempted to touch it, but we advise against that. Fire coral is not actually coral, but is more closely related to jellyfish. They are often found around the Florida coast, the Bermuda platform, and in the Caribbean reefs, and are fixed to coral, pilings, seaweed, and rocks. As they look like seaweed, some people have accidentally brushed up against them, leading to extreme discomfort. Fortunately, they have minimal toxicity, but that doesn't mean you won't experience a lot of pain. Many people note a burning sensation or stinging within five minutes to half an hour of contact. They might also develop a red rash and itching, followed by swelling around the lymph glands. Some people have even experienced nausea and vomiting, but this symptom is rare. After making contact with fire coral, you can rinse the area in seawater and apply an acetic acid like vinegar or isopropyl alcohol. Remove any parts of the fire coral left in your skin and immobilize the area to prevent the venom from spreading. Apply hydrocortisone cream daily to prevent itching. In severe cases, seeking medical attention may be your best option for relief. Number 5. Crown of Thorns Starfish Crown of Thorns starfish is the second largest starfish in the world, known to grow up to around 31 inches. They are a vibrant red color and can be found in the warm waters surrounding the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Red Sea, and all the way through to Central America's west coast. These brightly colored little critters have up to 23 spine-covered arms, and they can move at speeds of up to 12.4 miles an hour. The spines are a pretty good indicator that you shouldn't touch this starfish, and for good reason. They're poisonous. The spines contain neurotoxins, and they can pierce through wetsuits with ease. If you're poisoned, you may require surgical removal of the spines, and that's after you experience nausea, infection, and swelling that can last for over a week. Sometimes, the area around a sting turns dark blue, and you can experience pain for several hours before infection begins to kick in. It's really not in your best interest to touch these starfish. Some divers have been known to inject the starfish's own stomach acid into their legs to kill them and protect themselves from being stung. Number 4. Indian Red Scorpion a scorpion that only grows up to three and a half inches long probably doesn't seem all that dangerous, but it pays not to underestimate the Indian red scorpion found in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. This carnivorous invertebrate is responsible for many, many deaths. They have reddish brown to orange or brown coloring and will sting people if they feel threatened by them. While most adults won't die from a sting, small children can be at a greater risk. Reported clinical fatality rates can be as high as 40% with children the most common victims. If you're stung, you might feel severe pain at the sting site, vomiting, high and low blood pressure and heart rate, breathlessness, vomiting, and sweating. The Indian Red Scorpion's venom targets your cardiovascular and pulmonary systems, so pulmonary edema is one of the most common causes of death. Unfortunately, anti-venom is rarely effective, but blood pressure medication called Prozacin might reduce mortality. Strangely, even though they can literally kill you, people keep these scorpions as pets. They are also bred for medical research, since their toxins may have value as immunosuppressants for rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and other autoimmune disorders. Number 3. The Brazilian Wandering Spider the Brazilian wandering spider is considered one of the world's most venomous spiders. The neurotoxic venom in their bite can kill you, and children are the most at risk. Alongside being venomous, these spiders are also highly aggressive and were first discovered in Brazil. However, they are also found in Central and South America. Their leg span can be up to 5 inches, and they are hairy-looking spiders with 8 eyes, including 2 very large eyes. They move around quickly on their spindly legs and have very noticeable red jaws that they show off when they're feeling angry. Given their size and hairiness, it's easy to assume that the Brazilian wandering spider is a tarantula, but it is the very opposite. We know that tarantulas are generally harmless to humans and are mostly ambush predators. This means they wait for prey to come to them. In contrast, Brazilian wandering spiders are active hunters and will work hard to feast on mice, lizards, and insects. If you're bitten, you're in for a whole lot of pain. Their venom contains various peptides, proteins, and toxins, and these affect your neuromuscular system. 
Near immediate symptoms can include sweating, severe pain, and goosebumps. Some people experience a fast or slow heart rate, nausea, high or low blood pressure, stomach cramping, blurred vision, hypothermia, vertigo, and convulsions within half an hour. Fortunately, bites are rare, and most bites are not considered severe. Number 2. Irukandji Jellyfish Mother Nature really pulled one out of the bag with the Irukandji jellyfish. Not only is this jellyfish hard to see because of its tiny size and transparency, but it's also one of the world's deadliest jellyfish. With a 0.2-inch bell and 0.98-inch long tentacles, it's almost impossible to notice in the water, although you must look out for them if you want to avoid death. This tiny jellyfish found in the northern marine waters of Australia can inject stingers into their victims, resulting in a sometimes fatal condition called Irukandji syndrome. These stingers are found on their tentacles and bell, and they use all of them to inject venom. The stings are so severe that they can cause fatal brain hemorrhages, and up to 100 people end up in the hospital each year. The sting is also described as being 100 times more potent than the sting of a cobra, and about 1,000 times stronger than the tarantula. If you end up with Irukandji syndrome, you may feel muscle cramps in your arms and legs, followed by severe back and kidney pain. Your skin and face may then start to burn, followed by nausea, vomiting, headaches, restlessness, sweating, and an increase in your blood pressure and heart rate. Some people even experience psychological problems. Fortunately, high-quality intensive care treatment has stopped almost all stinging victims from dying of Irukandji jellyfish envenomation, but two deaths were reported in 2019. Number 1. Harvester Ant Harvester ants often build their nests near people's homes, which means many people find themselves being hostages in their own properties, worried about accidentally angering a harvester ant and being stung. And trust me, you do not want to be stung by harvester ants. When they sting, they cause painful sores, and some people even have allergic reactions to them. Depending on the ant, you may experience moderate or severe pain that lasts for several hours. It's also not out of the question to experience redness, swelling, and an allergic reaction that leads to life-threatening anaphylaxis. This can occur relatively quickly after being stung, with symptoms such as sneezing, hives, wheezing, diarrhea, anxiety, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, breathing difficulties, chest tightness, eye swelling and itching, rapid blood pressure loss, fainting, and even coma. If you're allergic to bee stings and wasp stings, it's highly likely you'll be allergic to ant stings as well. If you believe harvester ants live near your property, one of the best things you can do for your family is to call pest control to come and take care of them. Now, I'll be thinking twice before reaching out to touch any of these animals, that's for sure. Have you patted any of these animals before? Did anything happen? And knowing what you now know, would you pat any of them? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.